Welcome to Whiskey One, the channel for the novice, the curious, and the connoisseur. I'm Whiskey One, and we are having a special guest today, Mr. Daniel Warren from the Albuquerque Whiskey Society. Thanks for coming on by. Thank you, Israel. All right, well, this is a special, special day for me. I have tasted the Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof, phenomenal whiskey, but I rarely see it actually shared on YouTube. I also see it regularly unopened, and you see it on Instagram, everybody's bragging about their bottle, but they rarely talk about it, right? So we are gonna do that today. But I also wanna talk about the Single Barrel Barrel Proof Rye, that's a mouthful now, isn't it? <laughs> and a little bit about the Tennessee process because Daniel, you're from Tennessee. I am. Lived there for 37 years of my life. Okay, so a few days, not too long in Tennessee, right? Just, just <laughs> one or two. <laughs> so a, a seasoned vet of Tennessee uh -huh. and of course, you probably know a lot more about that whole Tennessee process than I do. And I just really want to share this whiskey together, talk about it, talk about prices, potential allocations, and is this darn thing worth it? Is it worth the hunt? Because me personally, I think it is. I don't know about you. I totally agree. They're both phenomenal whiskeys. Yes, indeed. And you also brought a special little prize I was not expecting. Do you want to show that off? <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to. So this is the Tennessee Tasters, um, little moonshine bottle that they make, uh, and Jack Daniels. Uh, they've been doing this, I think, since 16 or 17. It's kind of an experimental process that they go through. They've done everything from um, hickory smoked to angel share, and uh, their most recent one was a Jamaican spice. Uh, oh, wow. And they all come in these little bottles. They're kind of hard to find in, in Albuquerque anyway, New Mexico. I've never seen that bottle, by the way. Yeah. And they're all numbered. So this is number four in the series. Very cool. This one happens to be the Barrel Proof Rye. Okay. And I think you were telling me about, before this was a thing, mm -hmm. this came to be, they did a little experimentation, yep. right? They kind of got their feet wet with the public to see they if they did. like it, right? They did. So I think they're using it as a, a grounds to see where they're gonna open up their doors next. Um, okay. And they got great reviews mm -hmm. back on this barrel proof rye. So that's why we all are we're searching for this bottle mm -hmm. uh, of, of late. Before I forget, talk to me about the mash bill. Oh, um, this mash bill that they have in here, um, from some of the things that I've heard, is the first time they changed a mash bill for this rye um, in like 100 years. So this mash bill runs 70% uh, rye, 18% um, corn and 12% malted, bar malted barley in this, uh, in this rye. Okay, now that's interesting because if you know anything about Jack Daniels, right? They have been around for a very long time for one key reason, good whiskey, but consistency. And I have not opened this one. This is a 2021, I'm sorry, 2020 release and this will be a fresh uncorking. So what, whatever we try today will be fresh for both of us. Again, being a single barrel, every barrel is unique. So you might find a bottle just like it. Pay close attention to the barrel number because that'll tell you whether you got something different than somebody else, even through the same year. But consistency is the key. Yep. And I think, uh, me personally, I'm excited to try this. Yeah. I hope you are. And I think we're just gonna go ahead and dive in. Let's do it. All right, so we're going to start off with this uh, Lynchburg, Tennessee bourbon. Now, I will just mention, fun fact, technically, technically, this is not a bourbon. It's Tennessee whiskey, right? Technically, it is a bourbon, mm -hmm. but it's marketed as a Tennessee whiskey. That's so right. it meets all the qualifications to be a bourbon. Right. The, the entry proof, the corn, uh, all the criteria to be a bourbon. But by Tennessee law they have a process called a, the Lynchburg process. Okay. So what they do is they take 10 feet of charcoal yeah. and they filter the clear uh, alcohol before they put it in a barrel. They filter it through that 10 feet of maple charcoal. Um, what that does is that removes some of the tannins. It takes six days for that first drop from when it goes in to come out to the bottom. I've been to Jack Daniels Distillery 
25 plus times in my life. Um, I was just there this past fall, this past uh, Thanksgiving. So you got me beat by like 25, you know. <laughs> I, I have yet to go to the distillery and, we'll and, and I have a lot of catching up to you. Um, I will say this, this is an NAS. There is no age statement. And I think you and I were talking about the, that this is actually consistent with how they market mm -hmm. their whiskey, right? Yeah, they don't market anything today with age statements on it. Um, they know their master distillers and their master tasters that they have go in and they taste random barrels at the barrel house and they know when that whiskey is ready to be put into a barrel. So you're going to get the single barrels like these um, off the top floor of the rick house sure and then you're going to get some of these the lower <clears throat> end jack daniels little number seven some things you don't see much around here but you see in tennessee is a green label it looks just like the black label jack daniels okay. but it's a green label and those come off the bottom now i will say this is a very very thick to me in my opinion a very thick whiskey high proof yes this is bottled at 64.95 percent Simple math, 130 proof, damn near, right? Take your time. Let it kind of aerate a little bit. I don't do the aggressive swirl, if you will. I like to do a roll. Yeah. Me personally, because what that does for me is it lets that whiskey sort of coat the inside of the glass so that when you do nose it, when you do taste it, it's pretty much... Uh, giving you everything it's going to give you, right? But I don't do it aggressively, especially for a high proof, because what's going to happen, you're going to get punched in the face with alcohol. So give it a, I recommend a nice little swirl here, yep. or a little roll, just a gentle yep. roll. And uh, let's go ahead and talk about what we yeah. have, right? Yeah, it's, um, you know, immediately I get the molasses in there. You know, Jack Daniels is notorious for bananas. You just stole my line, but oh, stole it. So yeah, if there's one thing that struck me yeah. about this bottle, and this is before I'll just admit, like I really got into Jack Daniels, is that it came off very much like a banana nut bread, and it was very much unexpected because a lot of bourbons that I try, you know, they're laden with molasses. You got a little bit of anise or that rye kick. It's got toffee, vanilla, cinnamon, all these other things. But the one thing that usually stands out is like that caramel, that mm -hmm. toffee or, or uh, apple, apple pie, baked apple pie, if you will. This, however, very much like a banana or, you know, a banana nut bread. What, yeah. what do you think? Yeah, totally. It's, it's banana. All Jack Daniels, you can get banana in. It's just, it's, I think at this higher proof, it doesn't stand out as much. No, for some I think, reason, I don't know if we need to let it breathe a little. Yeah, well, it's, it's got that higher proof, and I'm getting more like a little burnt sugar. Yeah, yeah. In there. I do smell you, some you banana. You creme brulee? Oh, yeah. That nice, hard, yep. caramelized uh, shell, if you will, that they, they basically take a burner. Yeah. They light up that brown sugar, that, that caramel. And it's, it's that smell you get as soon as they put it on the table. That yep. aroma, that first aroma that comes out. Exactly. Mm. This is good stuff. It is. It is. Are you ready to uh, do have a little taste taste? Cheers. Hmm. Mm hmm. Oh my. That does not want to let go. Hmm. The viscosity that grabs that mouth. Um, oh yeah, yeah. That's your. You know, it's um, the flavors that are in there. I still get the. I still get a little bit. Of, a little bit of the molasses, brown sugar, that caramel, that sugar that you were just talking about on that cream brulee. Mm -hmm. I can taste it now. That's right up front for me. Yeah. Anyway, I, you can taste that. I'm gonna take a. I'm gonna take a second sip, but I'm gonna keep a little light. Yeah. Because that first sip. Let's just say it woke me up. It woke everything up. The entire palate was just sort of like invigorated. What is going on here, right? So I'm gonna take a second sip, a little less. I always like to take a second sip. The first sip, I always think, just like you said, is really, it wakes that mouth up. The second sip's where you get that flavor. Mm -hmm. That high proof does come through, but mm. if I didn't know what the proof was and I had to guess, I would not guess almost 130. Mm -mm. It's not something I would guess at 130. No, um, 
No, it's not. Um, it's not a distraction, if you will. Mm, good way. It's a welcoming, warming, yes. mouth you know, mouth coating sensation that just like sort of starts with sweet, a little bit more sweet. There's some there's some complexity here, some nuttiness, some fruitiness, uh, a little bit more depth with that sweetness, and then it's okay. Now we're getting spicy. We're getting spicy. We're not burning. Mm -hmm. We're just getting spicy, and we're rolling into those like baking spices, um, you know, more of your your tannins, if you will. Um, and it's like okay, now when I swallow, it's got that. It's not a Kentucky hug. We're gonna have to call it the Tennessee. The hug. The Tennessee hug, exactly. It definitely does hug you. And I get, uh, I get some dark like, tobacco in there, like a pipe tobacco. Yeah, it's earthy. Um, yeah, it's almost like a black, a mix between for me anyway. Sorry, a black tea, tabasco, a tobacco, and then sort of this amalgam of anise, like very light, very light licorice note. Hmm. And and I'm not talking the, the type that you get with like a rye, right? Right. It just stands out, profound type of a uh, wet grass. It's just enough of that rye, uh, yeah. I think content that's in there to give a little bit of that spice. I think I think this Jack Daniels runs at about um, twelve percent rye. I think's what it is. I'll have to double check that. But it's a uh, it's not a it's not a like a big high rye. No, no, at all. no. And and I'm getting it more. On that tail end, right? Yeah. Everything up front is sweet. Everything yeah. up front is okay. We're here to party. Um, yep. We're gonna we're gonna take you for that ride. Just make sure you're you're meeting the height height <clears throat> requirements. But um, definitely like thick, viscous, uh, and that's one thing I want to show show here too is um, if you can catch that is this is very viscous. When I do that gentle roll, it takes a long time to come down that glass. Um, there's, there's a lot of legs going on here, uh, you know, more legs than a, than a Vegas show for sure. And mm -hmm. it just takes its sweet, sweet time to come down. Yeah. It almost doesn't want to fall down, uh, kind of opposing gravity. If yeah. you will. Um, I like it so far. I, what are you thinking? I, this is a staple on my shelf all the time and I have a good shelf. Um, and it's to me, this is a sipper when I want to sit down and drink this much of a bourbon and it might take me an hour to drink this much mm -hmm. sitting down watching a game or something watching tv mm -hmm. and just sip this stuff um you know it's not an 80 proof uh you know it's there you know the proof's there and you know it's a jack dan you know it's jack daniels yeah i mean that's the thing yeah i get that even now the longer it's set i get more banana now yeah you do yeah it has yeah. time to tame yeah right? the more yeah. sits in the glass now, interestingly, for whatever reason, the nose reveals that banana, but then on the taste, it sort of gets gets hidden. It gets a little it lost. It gets knocked to the yeah. side. Hey, hold on. We have like toffee. We have other sweet mm -hmm. sweet notes going on here, but not the banana that you get initially, or is actually overwhelmingly really on the nose. Um, I don't get that on the taste. I don't know if you feel the same way. Yeah, I do. I think I think the banana on the flavor uh is gone i think the the spiciness the sweetness that comes through overpowers that banana mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On, the, on the it's on the nose definitely a little smoke in there an oaky i think that comes with yeah the tannins are there the tannins are there but not um not over i noticed yeah with like if something's super tannic for me i don't know about you it it leaves this like very dry yes. aftertaste it, it's almost like eh, bitter now if i did like it i won't like it later because I yeah. won't I won't be going back to it. What what about you? I love whiskeys that have been over oaked or put into new oak barrels twice. Right. And they're very they're very, very dry and to bitter to some point. Yeah, exactly. Bitter and very dry. Yeah. Now you're just like really just distracted at that point, right? Yeah. So um I don't know about you. I'm gonna cleanse the palate. Let's do it. And I'm gonna be ready to uncork this rye. Let's do um, it. I haven't tried it yet. This is this is a bottling that I haven't tried yet. So let's get this show on the road with the rye. Now with the rye, this is a higher proof. Mm -hmm. Same thing, NAS, non-H statement. Now this is coming in at a whopping 66.85%. So for all, all the American <laughs> uh, whiskey drinkers, 133.7 proof. And a fresh uncorking. 
And I'm sorry, I had to get that <laughs> initial whiff. All right. So this will be for awesome. you, sir. Thanks, sir. All right. Again, a single barrel, barrel proof, also a special release. Now, this hasn't been on the markets as long as, we'll just call it bourbon. So let's talk a little bit about that and what your thoughts are on the fact that this is sort of like a new release. What, what are you thinking? Did they, did they do good? Uh, are they hitting the mark? Are they? Is it a miss for you no, in, in I, your experience? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy. Uh, this is a home run on my part. I have um, a bottle of home. I searched it out when it first came out. Uh, I was actually at the distillery this past November when they were shipping these out for the first okay. time, and I had a hard time. I couldn't even find it in Tennessee. Um, and then living here in New Mexico, they didn't show up here until this spring. Okay. So um, I have a bottle at home. One of my favorite drinkers. Can't be a daily drinker because I can't find. It's hard to find. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Now that kind of <clears throat> that kind of reminds me of something. So drink it from home, and you find something that's really good, really tasty. Mm -hmm. And if you're like me, and I think you are, it's not about keeping it all to yourself, right? The whiskey is about an experience mm -hmm. and being able to share with others, right? One hundred percent. Now, the reason I bring that up is over the last couple of years, especially because of COVID, I was looking for like a tasting society, if you will, or a group that also enjoys whiskey, loves to find unique and different types of uh, whiskeys that are out there, mezcal, tequila, whatever, and just like share that experience and learn from each other and what each other's tastes and preferences are. And over the last couple of years, it's been tough to find something here <laughs> locally in Albuquerque. So this is uh, sort of a good topic to bring up as it relates to your group that you yep. started here in Albuquerque. Yeah. So um, Albuquerque Whiskey Society, we started our group uh, three years ago. And it started out as my wife and I wanted to get some friends together and have a whiskey tasting. And in 2018, we did. People brought covered dish. And... Just a bunch of friends went on that way for a couple of years um i think we started a facebook page um people joined through the facebook page and when covid hit our facebook membership started growing and growing and growing we started doing virtual tastings turned it into a real business and now the albuquerque whiskey society we meet every month now that covid restrictions have lifted we're meeting in person we were doing a lot of virtual we did yep. a lot of virtual. Yep. We did combination virtual and in person. And virtual um, tastings are difficult to put together, by the way. Virtual tastings are very difficult to put together. Um, we would have to fill up enough one ounce sample bottles, yep. um, label them correctly, make sure that the stickers don't come off, make sure everybody gets their samples. Yep. People don't show up, you know, to pick them up, then they have to come during the week. And just the logistics of it is very difficult. Yep. So we're moving away from remote and doing all back, going back to all in person. Thank goodness, right? Yeah, thank, thank goodness. goodness. Last month we did a blind tasting, which Israel and his wife were there. It was great tasting. Um, we've done barrel picks. We've done a Dickel barrel pick. We've done a, a Woodford Double Oak Barrel Pick, which is going to be hitting the shelves here in, in New Mexico very soon. Very cool. And coming up in August, we're going to be doing a Whistle Pig Barrel Pick. I'm excited to see that. Yeah. Honestly. That was uh, going to be fun. Whistle Pig makes great, great rye. Very unique from, I think, most other ryes. They're very floral and <clears throat> grassy and very organic. I'll just, yeah. say, I'll just say that. And yes, of course, it's usually a, a mix of Canadian rye, yep. but, you know, don't don't let us sell you short. Like that's, it's good, good rye. Yep. So I'm definitely eager to, to check that out. Now you did mention the last couple of tastings and yes, we have my wife and I who are part of whiskey one channel did partake in that. It was a great time. Good. Uh, you know, we had a blast, honestly. Um, I think it was a great experience one because it was the Balcones tasting. And if you follow this channel long enough, you see us on Facebook or Instagram, I'm a huge Balcones fan. So <laughs> when you did that, that tasting, was fun. I was on board. Yeah. I was really like all in on that one. So thank That's you for that. That's a good one. You're welcome. Yeah, we're trying to to get in, um, get with distilleries so that they can help sponsor our tastings. Yeah. The one we have coming up in a couple of weeks, and you can find out about it on abqwhiskeysociety.com. And we'll, we'll um, post that okay. in the link below. It's uh, Old Forster. 
So okay. we're going to be walking through the history of Old Forester. Um, so I'm a little a bummed out. I know you guys are going to have a little fun, but I'm going to be out of town of all times to be yep. out of town. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be looking forward to, to seeing hopefully that video on YouTube as yeah. well. So if you guys get a chance, yeah, I'm hoping we'll, you post it. We'll try to get that one recorded. Absolutely. Awesome. Hey, let's check this out, right? Let's, let's check this one out. Man, this thing is so dark. Very dark. So just would you? I would say this is darker than... than I the, think it's darker than, than the, bourbon. the bourbon, right? I really do. I let's mean, I don't have much out. in this glass, but it's... Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely darker. The, the bourbon was got like a dark amber, and this is just like... Just... It's almost whole, the color of this, this bar it's top. mahogany, yeah. Yeah. This is almost a mahogany color. Absolutely. Yeah. And the nose is very welcoming, very sweet. Uh, I wouldn't say it's like overtly sweet. So one of the things that I found about this one is I don't think it smells anything like the regular Jack Daniels rye. Okay. That comes out. I okay. don't know if you have it, but I, I don't um, have the regular. But rye it's too. I don't think I think the nose is totally different on this high proof, which is actually it's actually a really good drink as well. I get banana. Oh Sorry. yeah. Sorry, I get you do. banana. It's Jack Daniels, man. But this one definitely has that dark molasses. So in the South, we call them blackstrap molasses. It's that dark molasses. The way you described it, yeah. yeah. Now, like, you know, the power of subjectivity, of course. Yeah. I was thinking, yep, I got that. And tobacco. And tobacco. I didn't get as much tobacco in, like, black tea. Yeah. As, as much as I got here. Like, this felt, yeah, the black tea and tobacco was there. It took a while. This is up front. This one, I smell more like pipe tobacco. So there's a difference in pipe tobacco and Maybe just like, like, like a, a chewing tobacco. Yeah, like almost like, like a darker, thick tobacco. Uh -huh. Yeah, no. It, because pipe tobacco can be sweet. Yes, and, and just by comparison, the proofs are really close. I mean, we're talking yeah. one or maybe 2%, you know, do the math, right? There's something that's a bit more dense yeah. on the rye than on the bourbon. Now for a rye. It's not like rye heavy, not even rye forward. It's I, not. I would almost mistake this for a bourbon or a high rye bourbon. Just on the nose. Just on the nose. On the nose, yes. On the nose, yeah. I could see that. A high rye bourbon, you could think so, yeah. It's Man. definitely got that spice in there. A lot I'm, of I'm ready to go in. Yeah, I'm ready too, but a lot of toffee. A lot of toffee. Very sweet. More sweet than the bourbon. Mm-mm-mm. Now, I know we talked about how this one did not drink up to its proof. There is this one way drinks way less than its proof, I think. Absolutely. The, the raw spice comes in, that molasses comes in. That's, it's sweet and spicy at the same time. Yep. Um, the sweetness, you get the sweetness, and then the spiciness comes in. And I think that's where these start to separate. This is more mm. sweet and more spicy uh, than, than the bourbon. I'm not saying it's like way better, but right now, honestly, this this is this is getting my favor. Right yeah, now. this um, when I first drank this, I really thought this was one of the best ryes I'd ever drank, and I still feel that way. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I can tell a rye whiskey. Sometimes you can tell it by nose. This one, as you said, is hard to tell on the nose, but I get a I get a. It's not an alcohol burn. I get a mm -hmm. burn on the sides of my tongue Absolutely. for the rye, and that's where this one comes in. Huge raw flavor. Yeah. Thing. So when I first tried the bourbon, it woke up the senses, right? Mm. That initial sip. Go into the rye. Let's just say it reinvigorated all the senses, yeah. the palate, everything, and said, hey, this is spicy. I get like menthol, menthol if you will. Um, I get a lot more like mm. rye presence. Again, of course it's a rye, but I, I do get more like grassy notes. Um, more mint, like I said, I did mention menthol, but the thing that's sort of like very pervasive for me on the rye is this toffee, rich creme brulee type of a, like a mouthfeel, if you will. Very sweet. Uh, a lot of brown sugar for me again, almost like salted toffee. Yeah. But there's a little bit of that minerality to it. You, you do, you do get some of that ethanol in there because you do get the high proofs there yeah one of the things in this rye that i that normally i get in rye and i and i say this and people think i'm crazy but it's almost a juniper-ish in some rye mm -hmm. this one i don't get it i don't mm -hmm. get it at all 
almost a gin and some rise on the nose. And I think it's that rye spice that mm -hmm. comes in with the, when you mix in the corn and the barley, it gives it that juniper aroma. Um, I've said this all the time when I drink rye, but I do not get that at all in this thing. More baking spices. More baking spices. And less floral. Yep. And, and to your point, you when you were it. bringing up, uh, you know, whistle pig, that is very floral. Yes. Like very, um, like farm, <laughs> you know, farm like qualities. It's like you're walking in the field, right? Yep. This one, none of that. To me, you do get more minty freshness. Um, but, but to your point, right? Mm -hmm. This, this is not a very like grain heavy type of a rye in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and it's very enjoyable by the, the way. The proof, uh, it, it's just to me, it's so inviting to drink and yeah. the proof sneaks up on you. I was telling you right. earlier when I first got this bottle, I opened it and I drank it and I didn't really pay attention to the proof. Then I had to get after I drank two or three pours, I had to get up and go check the proof because right. I was like, what did I, what have I been drinking? <laughs> and it's exactly. hundred. This one's one hundred and twenty seven. So um, the proof will fool you on these on this one especially especially that one right because this is even a higher proof uh, yeah. than the bourbon. And, you know, this is also an NAS whiskey. I, I didn't see any age mm -hmm. statement. And to your point earlier, like they rarely put, if any at all, put an age statement. And it's ready when it's ready. Yep. Right. And that that really does remain true for, for all whiskey. Um, some of your hardcore whiskey enthusiasts are looking for an age statement. They won't buy whiskey mm -hmm. without an age statement because they feel like you're not really revealing enough. Uh, you're not being transparent. But for this stuff, guys, um, it's well worth the hunt. And I really want to talk about that with you because yeah. good high proof whiskey, okay? And here's the hard part. You're, you're not really going to see this on a shelf anywhere you go. You will have to hunt. You may not have to hunt as much for the bourbon. Mm -mm. But when it comes to this rye, I think words out on the street. Yep. And this... It took some hunting. It took uh, a little bit of whiskey talk, if you will. Uh, I had to speak the whiskey code in order to get it. Uh, so those that don't know whiskey code, I, I didn't just make it up. Like every now and then you have to convince a liquor store owner or somebody that's in the know where you can get a bottle because if not, it's going to be very difficult to yeah. get your hands on. But it is fun and it is well worth the hunt, I, I'd say. It is, totally. These, um, like you said, these are easier to find. You can find these around. Um, what they did is in 2018 and 2019, they released a bourbon. It wasn't barrel proof, but it was a hundred proof. It's not a bottled in bond, but okay. they call it the heritage. It looked just like this bottle. Okay. Except instead of the green, it had blue. Okay. And it said heritage release on it. Now I hear that's a special bottle, by the way. It is. And, and. I should have brought you some. Uh, <laughs> we'll bring some. I'll bring you. You can have some at the house next time. But they're, they're, they were toasted barrels. Okay. And they were at least six years old. I do know that. There's no age statement, but I know sure. from sources that they were at least six-year-old whiskey. Okay. Um, Jeff Arnett put them in a bottle, in a barrel, toasted, and released them in 2018 and 2019. They were $75 retail. Secondary market, they were, even today, you can look them up, Jack Daniels Heritage, they're hitting four to six hundred dollars a bottle they're yeah. just not they just don't have them anymore and they're not doing it and i think this is going to be the same thing and i hope not i, hope I, not I really too. hope not um you know when you make something this good you know as a distiller i don't know that it's doing like the community any good when you keep it to yourself so to speak yeah. because lord knows yeah you made something special mm -hmm. you may not be able to strike lightning twice in the same place at the same time but you don't want to keep the lightning in the bottle, so to speak. Yeah. This is something that I think needs to hit at least annually, in my opinion. I agree. Just like, just like the bourbon. Uh, I'm really hoping. So this is sort of my public service announcement. Yeah. You know, my, my pledge, so to speak, to, to make that happen. Okay, Brown Foreman, you heard him. Do it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So, so now we had the bourbon. We had the rye. And what I typically do on, on our show is... I try to do a little bit of uh, evaluation, so to speak. I give a five-point system. I'm really looking for not just flavor, but uniqueness and complexity. That's yeah. how I evaluate it. Some people evaluate and score based on the price alone. I like to look at everything as a whole, or sure. even like, you know, some people will evaluate based on the look of the bottle. Yeah. It is a sexy bottle, by the you way. You know, Jack Daniels, Single Barrel, um, they're, very, they're beautiful bottles. Um, they're iconic. You know yeah. what they are. 
you know, they change bottles every now and then. I know uh, they changed the Gentleman Jack bottle. And, you know, it's it's a beautiful bottle now. Yeah. Uh, it was, was before. But yeah, you, I think, you strip the labels and that becomes a nice decanter, Oh, right? it's a beautiful decanter, yeah. Um, for me, on this one, on the bourbon, if I had to rank it, um, I would say for value, it's hard to beat. And value on this? Absolutely. 65 bucks. 65, right? yeah. Yeah. You can 59, 60 dollars, 65 dollars, 60 to 70 dollars all day long. Yep. Value of this, of a barrel proof, hands down one of the best values you can find out there. Yep. Flavor, it will go up against any other barrel proof whiskey that you find out there. I would say there are better, but you'll pay a lot more money for them. So right. I'm, my ranking, I'm going to give it a four and a half. Even though I'm a Jack Daniels lover, okay. I can't go five right now. Okay. Because I'm going to go five on something else. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I think I know where you're leaning into. Um, and that's, that, I think that's a good score. I think that's a fair score. And I think you actually beat me to it. Now, I do give this also a 4.5 out of a 5 because of its complexity and its, and its overall flavor. It's a standout for me. Yep. Right? And I will, if, if I know that I'm running low and it looks like I'm about halfway, <laughs> I may have to go get another bottle. All right, so yeah, I gave this a four point five. You did too. We're yep. right on the mark. Um, again, you know, it's it's got a lot of bold flavor, and, and I really enjoy it. So I'm ready to talk a little bit about the rye. Let's go. And starting with you first, what was your overall score? Yeah, my overall score on the rye is um, I'm going to get it a five. I think okay. um, it's it's complex. It's delicious. Uh, it is if I were to go a little bit lower. It would be because of the availability to get to it. Oh, okay. I, you don't see it on a shelf. You can't just walk into a store and get it as you can this one. Um, so I, I want to say it's a five for everything except availability. Yeah, that's a bummer. It um, is. And it's funny that you said availability, you're going to bring it down a notch. So I'm kind of the opposite way when it comes to the evaluation, right? I want to say five. I want to say five. Uh, but I'm not. I'm going to go 4.75 out of a 5. Um, now, to me, this, this borders on Unicorn. And I say that because it's a single barrel, right? And, you know, you're not going to get another barrel just like it. And every single barrel tells its own unique story. But the reason I didn't give it like that 5 out of 5, um, one is because, to your point, it is harder to find and I tend to bump it up a notch if it is harder to find. Uh, but that's why I gave it that extra, honestly, because these are both great. But I felt overall, this had more depth to it, more flavor, and more going on, quite frankly. Um, you could have made this and put it in here, and I would have felt like that's a bourbon. This feels like a bourbon to me. Until you get to the taste, Until you course. get to the taste. I Until think the nose you're taste. right. I think the nose you're 100% on target. Yeah. So, I mean, I really appreciate you coming by. Yeah. Again, this is my first guest uh, appearance with somebody else on the Whiskey One channel. I think it's been fun. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Thank you, Israel, for inviting me and the Whiskey Society. And thanks for being a part of the Whiskey Society Absolutely. Um, here in Albuquerque. We've, um, we have bigger and better things coming. I'm excited to, to see it. Yeah. It's, we have a whole 2021 still to get through, and you guys do your tastings at least once a month. Once right? a month. Uh, everything's on the website. Talk, talk um, to me about that website. Yeah, everything's on the website, abqwhiskeysociety.com or Facebook that, page. Okay, we'll Facebook put the page. info down mm -hmm. below. Um, just look up Albuquerque Whiskey Society on the Facebook, um, in, in your Facebook, and um, request to be a member. There's three simple questions to answer. I don't let people in unless you answer the questions. Okay. They're simple questions. So please <laughs> answer the questions. There's no whiskey code. There's though. no whiskey code. There's no secret password. There's no um, <laughs> There's no fees to pay. Your dues are paid every month when you come to an event. Okay. And then we provide the tastings for you. That's so, great. That's it. And it's been a fun experience. I've been to two, two of them. I'm unfortunately, not going to make it this month. But, hey, I know what next month's going to be, right? We've got do a, you have an idea? What yeah. Gonna um, we're going to do uh, the Whistle Pig That's barrel right. pig. That's so right. So we got the Old Forester coming up at the 24th of July. Okay. And then we got a Whistle Pig um, barrel pick and tasting coming up the 21st of August. And then... We're going to try to do something special in September. That's going to be our three-year anniversary. Okay. Do a special tasting, and I'm working with some local 
uh, distributors and things to do some super special tastings, like crazy special tastings right at the first of the year, hopefully. Well, I will say this, you have a lot more patience than I do. Uh, I think, you know, a time or two I thought, I need to put a Whiskey Tasting Society here here in Albuquerque, but I just don't. So my yeah. hat's off to you for that. Man, I'm, I'm, it's, it's been fun. It's been a blessing. Uh, it's, you know, it was, I call it a my mistake business and uh, I love it. <laughs> it's great. So uh, my wife Cheers and to I, great mistakes. Yeah, cheers to great mistakes. Thank you very much. Thanks for having. It. Yeah, you got it. Hey, thanks all of you for visiting and stopping by the Whiskey One channel. And remember, here at Whiskey One, it's about the one you enjoy. Cheers.